Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's tutorial, you will learn how to create a cool image slider inside of a React project. But before we do that, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Let's firstly have a look what we will be building. We have a simple slideshow. We having 28 cards inside of the state so 28 properties we have a state on our application and only one of them is currently selected and we are navigating we are laying out all the cards in one row and navigating to the currently selected one okay so the previous and next button just changes the currently active property in the react state and then we are triggering and rendering the right classes and having CSS transitions to animate that container to the right position. Okay, so this is what we will be building. If you haven't already, check out the React Transition Group tutorial, where we also covering how to animate with the React Transition Group module. But in this tutorial, we'll be purely just adding specific classes to our containers. So we are not using any third party libraries in this tutorial. Here is the React app.js, which is the main component that we will be working with. It has the state and we are setting the properties to data.properties. That is a collection of data coming from an external file. So we've got all the data saved here and we are rendering individual objects as the cards. So that's where the properties are coming from. And then we are setting by default the first property as the property on the state okay so there are two pieces of state on our app then we have next and previous property methods that are fired when we click on the next and previous button we are simply reducing the index of the property by one when we go to the previous and we are adding one to the index if we go into the next property okay so that's what the next and previous button do and inside of the render we have the two buttons then a page container with a little bit of copy and the card itself okay so we passing the active property to the card component that then renders all the data on the page okay so if i collapse the sidebar this is a stateless component that simply renders all the information from the property object inside of styled component okay so that's the card and this is what we will be starting with if we review it in the browser we go next and previous you see that we are changing the state we are changing the card property but we are not animating anything and all the cards are there's basically only one card at the time rendered on the page and what we will be doing next is rendering all properties in one row so we'll be using Flexbox for that. And then we'll use the CSS classes and some little bit of calculation to move it to the right place. We'll go into the code, into the app.js and we'll wrap it firstly inside of cards slider. Okay, simple div container. And then we will also wrap it in cards slider wrapper. Okay, so we're wrapping the card in two containers and that's what we will need. The card slider will align everything in the middle of the page and the card slider wrapper will stretch all the cards next to each other once we render all 28 or 30 of them next to each other we'll use the card slider wrapper to create a container and using flexbox to stretch them if we look at the app.scss we have already card slider there that's what makes it align in the middle of the page we're setting the max width to 226 pixels and the after is a simple element that will create a border for the active property. Okay, so the blue border is just the after pseudo element. And if we review it in a browser, we'll see the blue border around the card. And that is the after element. And inside of it, we have a, just a single card. Now let's go back to VS Code. And first thing we'll do, we'll render multiple cards on the page okay so we'll check the state we'll destructure the state inside of the app.js 
we'll get all the properties. So we've got it already destructured. And now we will need to create multiple cards. Hopefully you are familiar with the React and how to loop over a collection of cards. We will loop over the properties and for each property we want to render the card. Okay, so we'll just cut it out of the bottom and paste it inside of the map. We need to also include the key and this will be property dot underscore ID. Okay, the ID is on the property. It's a unique ID on individual objects. So that's what we are using for the key. And now we should have 28 or how many cards on the page? Let's see how many cards we've got in the store. 28, 29, index 29 means we have 30 cards. Okay, so now we should have inside of the browser 30 cards rendered on the page and they nicely stuck up underneath each other. That is exactly what we expected. Now we need to stretch them next to each other in the big container. Now we can go back to the style sheet and just above the card slider, we will use the card slider wrapper and we'll make sure that it displays, uh, displays flex that will stretch all the cards and on the card itself we want to flex one. Okay, so we want all the cards to split the space and fit next to each other. That's why we're giving it a flex one. And if we save it and look at it in the browser, we should see them stuck next to each other. So we've got one row and they individually just taking as much space as they can. So we will need to tweak the size of them. Let's set the min width to 200 pixels and see how this looks in the browser. Now we have it stretched and everything grows outside of that container because we have it set into the flex container and now everything grows. We don't have horizontal scroll bars because on the body I have overflow hidden. Okay, so let's bring the styles of the body. We have overflow hidden X on the body. Otherwise there would be a horizontal scroll bar revealing this container but we want to make sure we never see this horizontal scroll bar. That's why there is overflow X on the body container. Now we'll need to give the wrapper position absolute. Okay, so that's the element that we will be animating. So position absolute will position it absolute relative to the card slider. That's why you can see the card slider has position relative on it. That means we can then offset this based on the card we want to go to. Okay, so we'll do a little bit calculation in JavaScript in the app JS. But for now, let's preview what the effect, what we try to do inside of the DevTools. Okay, so we're saving it with position absolute. We go back to the browser. We don't see much difference. But if we go to the card slide, cards slide a wrapper and give it a left negative 10% you see how it's moving and if I hit shift and arrow up and down we'll see that we are animating it to the left or to the right so we need to do a calculation what is the right percentage to move this offset and even better instead of using the left we'll use the CSS transform which is more useful or more performant if you want to do some animations okay so we prefer to use transforms instead of left offset and that's what we'll do now inside of the app.js now we'll go back to the javascript back to the app.js and inside of the card slider wrapper we will create inline styles and inside of it we'll calculate the transform offset so we'll use the translate x we need to use the negative because we want to go to the left and we will use the property index and then we'll multiply it by 100 divided by the property's length. Okay, so this is the calculation we'll use 
that will give us the translate x offset and if we save this in a browser and look at it we'll click on next and we are moving to the right offset calculated on based on the number of properties in our state so if we would have different number of properties in the state this calculation would still calculate the right offset now let's go back to the app.js and we will do another tweak on the cards slider container we will want to render active slide class okay so additional class we want to style the active card the one which is currently selected in a slightly different way so we need to have this hook on the cards slider and we'll use active slide and use the property.index again to generate different class anytime we go to the next or previous card now when we preview it in a browser we'll see that we have an extra additional active slide zero class rendered and that changes if we go next or previous so we are having a different classes on the container and then we are translating the wrapper to the right offset now instead of the harsh jump to the right offset we want to animate smooth it out a little bit and for that we have to include the transition i'm just pasting it in transition transform 300 milliseconds and we use the cubic bezier value to smoothen out the transition okay so without this we are going to the right offset without any animation this will get us there nice and smooth so if i save the file and go back to the browser we will see that now the slider animates to the right place with a nice transition okay so this is a basic css transition and now we can be very playful as you know in the example i showed you at the start we can style any of the cards a different way than the active okay so the active card stays exactly like it is but we can play with all the other elements or attributes of the card before it becomes active and that creates the effect of the card coming into the blue border or outside of it so let's firstly give each card opacity 0 0.5 okay this will make it half transparent and we want the active one the one which is currently inside of the box to have a slightly different opacity so we'll make it opacity one so let's say dot card will be opacity one but which one which card is this for that we will use the active slide and the index that we've generated before and we can also if we go back to the code you know that each of the card has an id 0 1 2 3 and so on okay so we can target inside of the active slide 5 the slide 5 the card 5 and style it in a different way okay so now it's just a matter of having the right selectors inside of our style sheet to generate the right class alrighty so inside of the style sheet we will target the cards slider and when it has the dot active slide one class we will target the first card so card hyphen one and we will set the opacity to one okay now we will also add the transition so it fades in or fades out and we will use the transition opacity 300 milliseconds linear and now we have the second card because the first card has a index zero so we have the second card fading in and fading out based on if it's coming in or outside of the active border we could simply duplicate the selector change the id to zero and have the first two cards with the same effect but that repeating it for each of the 30 cards that would take quite some time so instead of having it like this we will use the sas loop and we will loop over all the cards and generate these classes dynamically now when we save it and view it in a browser we should see exactly the same animation regardless of which class we setting to active or which property we setting to active so all the way to the end we should see the fade in fade out transition when the card becomes active
Okay, so the cool things about this is that we can now scale all of the cards down and only make the active one opacity or scale one and that will create the zoom in zoom out effect. So let's do it next. Let's jump back to the style sheet and for the card the default transform scale will be 0 0.7 and we will transform scale one only the active card and now we need to add transition of the transform so let's copy the same styles as we've got on the container comma and paste it in now we are transitioning also the transform so it will scale up and down using this transition and using the same cubic bezier that we've used on the slider itself Okay, so that's that should give us the scaling effect when we go from one to the other. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. We didn't have to adjust any margins, any spacing between the cards because we only scaling them down. So naturally they still sit next to each other, but because we've scaled down all of the other ones apart from the active one, looks like we've also tweaked the spacing around it but that is not true okay so sometimes using css and clever css scaling things up and down doesn't require any layout changes any spacing changes so hopefully that is now very clear of what we're doing and we will wrap it up here now let's just quickly recap what we've done in this tutorial we are rendering all 30 cards in one big container. We're using Flexbox to stretch it all the way to as many percentage as it needs to. Then we are using the Transform Translate X on the container on the card slider wrapper to move these cards exactly to the offset that we calculated based on the cards in the store and based on the count as well okay so this will generate it this 43 person is generated automatically based on the number of cards in the state and then we also use this active slide class to target the currently active slide and make sure that the card currently in a view is styled accordingly okay all the other cards we've played with it we've changed the opacity we've changed the scale but the main card is exactly how it was at the start of the tutorial Okay, so inside of the React, we are not doing much in terms of React coding. All we did is set the properties on the state, make one of them, made the first one active by default, and then we are just changing the state using the buttons, increasing and decreasing the currently selected property. And then inside of the page container, we have a two wrappers and then looping over the properties and here is the final project that i'm including in the final files you can see that i'm also hiding all the copy before it becomes the active property and also we have a gradient going from the edges of the browser that is covering some of the properties that are far away from the active one and all that is done using another column another container around the whole thing and inside of it I have a before and after pseudo elements that includes the gradients okay so I'm taking gradients stretching them from the edge of the browser in and that's how that gradient is created and inside of the HTML there is additional column container okay so that's how the final animation was created if we look at the loop not only i'm animating opacity but also the transform background color and border color and also the details the specific small container with the copy is animating to opacity one for the active card and is set to opacity zero on the cards that are not active that was a monster wasn't it but hey it takes what it takes <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you've learned something about CSS, how to apply classes, and then at the right time, use CSS transitions to create pretty cool effect, but you must agree at the end of it, it wasn't that hard. 
If you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments what was the main takeaway from this tutorial. And don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until next time, happy coding, bye.